<laughs> What's up y'all, how y'all doing? Today I'll be making a high voltage water capacitor. What is this and what is that if you ask me? Well, I don't know either. Have you made one? Well, no. But I read about it. And it has some very important stuff. But how can you build your own capacitor that, well, that can take up a, a huge amount of high voltage intake and it's made out of water. And as you remember correctly, well, uh, high voltage and water don't go well because conductivity and other issues. So I'm gonna be making that. Oh yeah, and don't forget to share, subscribe and comment anything down below. And uh, well, let's proceed. Let me remind you in short, a capacitor is a device that stores electric charge, right? Yeah, it's consists of two conductors and separated by a material called dielectric. So when we connect a capacitor to a voltage source, obviously, two plates will become charged, one positive and one negative. If we cut off this circuit of the capacitor, two charges will be stuck near to each other, but they wanna go, they wanna leave, they wanna neutralize. If we directly short or connect it to any resistor, or any wire in that sort, the charges immediately neutralize each other, the capacitor becomes discharged completely. Now, water capacitor is the same thing. It's incredible. It's the same thing, but those conductors are replaced with water. So let's just do it. So we brought this water to this beaker and then mix a little bit of salt to it and then stir it until the water becomes salty enough so it can conduct electricity better. Then we stir, we stir, we stir. All of it is now dissolved. Now just to try if it is salty enough. <coughs> yep, very salty. Okay, I brought these two well flasks uh, or bottles, just depend on the language. Anyway, these two, one is smaller and one bigger. So because I can put it like this. One into the other. Okay, now I've, well, made them at equal levels, almost. So we're gonna put one to the other, one electrode here on the outside, and one electrode inside of the inside bottle. Which is weird to say that. Right here, you can see it. The first bottle, well, it's kind of floating by the way. So any kind of electric discharge cannot pass through it, which makes it really strong for high voltage applications. So here you have it, a high voltage capacitor water. Seems, well, very easy, right? Yeah, it is easy actually. It's very easy to build. All you need is water or to make it better, you need to make it salt water or saline as they call it. So this is the water capacitor that I was talking about. Obviously, I'm not gonna end the video here, of course, I'm gonna experiment on it. For that purpose, I'm gonna be using my, well, my old ZVS driver and its flyback transformer. They're like this. To drive this ZVS circuit, I need a lot of power. So, and that, I want you guys to introduce you to my new power supply. That, uh, well, I think my sponsor, well, mom and dad. And then let's turn it on. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> All right, so let's just raise the voltage a bit. Hmm, let's do it to 15. But I wonder how it tastes like. Oh. Oh. Don't you guys ever taste it. 15 power volts, okay? It's very painful. Okay, let's power this ZVS now. Ooh, let you see it. Yeah. Ooh, that was clay. Ooh, oh, oh. damn. Damn. That's cool, man. Wow. <laughs> that is cool. Okay, now we're gonna connect the high voltage terminals to my, well, capacitor and see what will happen. Okay, now I've hooked my transformer to this new, uh, well, DIY capacitor, and let's charge it up and see what will happen. High voltage is on. All right, I think it's charged now. Then, let us see 
a high voltage well uh, as you guys know since i put in a high voltage i expect a, another high voltage stored in this capacitor which means if i short it it will create a spark let's do it again let's charge it up okay it is charged now let's discharge it yeah it was little yeah come on man i need i need power Yeah, it's very small. You can't hear, you can't see it probably. It's really small. Well, the sparks are too small to see because of the capacitor's property. So I'm gonna try to do in parallel while charging and discharging at the same time. Which means I'm gonna wind this thing to the high voltage and let the spark gap in between. So it will charge and discharge immediately so let's just see the gigantic sparks wow yep Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was fun, but I'm not satisfied enough because this capacitor is really small and doesn't hold that much charge, so I can discharge it freely. So we need to improve it. Okay, so all we have to do now is increase its capacity. And how do we do that? Of course, well, of course, we can, well, increase the amount of water. Okay, guys, now I've replaced, well, the flask was, was a much bigger one. Yeah, I just didn't choose for beauty or aesthetics. I just chose they are both big and larger in volume. So we're gonna use this, charge them with my ZVS driver and from my voltage supply over there. And I expect they're gonna be a huge difference. Now let's charge the capacitor. All right, I charged it, disconnected, and we're gonna do this. Ah, uh, yeah, it's much bigger now. But there is one disadvantage of this water capacitor. There are lots of sharp edges and this thing is not smooth. There's always sharp points. So the charge always run out. So we have to discharge it very immediately because it's gonna dissipate quickly. Ah, uh, that was, yeah. Let's just make an angle. Let's do it again. Charge, then discharge. Damn. Charge, discharge, damn. Okay, now I've darkened the room so you guys can see the sparks very clearly. Charge, then discharge, damn. Yeah, we gotta do it immediately because energy dissipates very quickly. I wonder what will happen if I touch this thing. This is what I call curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> Damn, that was that was hard. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and comment any idea you have down below.